Uh, speaking of people who m may be soon available for comment. Uh, so now we're hearing FTR's contracts are up in April and they have already asked for and been granted time off to heal their bodies up from all of the great matches they've been having in every promotion around the world except AEW. And uh, boy, howdy. I mean, these guys have to make an important decision because it wouldn't have been as hard two weeks ago if the specter of Vince was not around, but do they stay where they have been the pretty much a single or tag team, the best in-ring talents in AEW since they've been there that have been the most consistent, had the best matches with everybody, also have had the best actual wrestling matches, all three of them, uh, of the year in other promotions. Do they stay in AEW where they've been booked like shit because they were slapped in the face professionally, if not literally, by the buckaroos? Or do they go back to the company that with Triple H in charge, one would have thought they were already high on that list to get back, and one would already think that they know when their contracts are up and et cetera up there, except the specter of the guy who tried to put them in cat in a hat outfits is now once again looming over the company. Hey, Triple H didn't do too much to protect them on the main roster either. Well, and that's, you know... So therein lies a conundrum somewhat at this point, because you would have thought they'd be a shoe in to say, thanks very little, you're welcome even less, fucking Tony, for putting us in the goddamn position to have to fucking be outmaneuvered by children from Cucamonga instead of being, you know, the top team in the company that we deserve to be. So we'll just go back over and yeah. But now, and... I mean, Bruce, I, Bruce was still there. Bruce was the one that was, I believe, actually, didn't he try to... Talk them into it. Talk them into it yeah. or excuse it or fucking make excuses for it or whatever the fuck. But he will do, you know, whatever the wind is blowing from the, from the top. But with Vince back around, can you trust? Can you trust that at all? Because that was a ridiculous... Or are they just because they 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 don't live like movie stars? They're good old fucking North Carolina boys, and I'm sure they've got all the money they're going to need for a while. Do they just go to Japan every once in a while, and or do the things they'd like to do, and not have to put up with this horse shit? Well, that's the question. Do you want to go back to where they booked you like shit, or do you want to go to the? Or do you want to stay where they want to stay you like where they shit? booked you like shit? Let's evaluate this for a second. If you went back to WWE, do you think they keep the name Dax and Cash, or they go back to, what was it, Scott Dawson and Dash Wielder? I forget what the fucking name See, was. See, they're our favorite fucking wrestlers. We can't, because they've had so many names, we can't remember what was when. They were the... Dash Wilder, that was his name. Dash Wilder, they were the Revival, they were FTR, they were the fucking... I can't remember... <laughs> The point is, this is the problem with the current contract system and there being, you know, imagine in the days of roller games and roller derby, if some of the talent jumped, if they'd had to switch names. But they've had too many names. They've not been focused on. Their talent has not been appreciated in either place. And again, you know, you hear from the the side of Uncle Dave and the people he talks to, oh, it's ridiculous to think they've been buried because of all the belts they had in companies that don't make a shit in this country. The whole, we've talked about it, the whole thing that was hanging on it was winning the big one there on that TV to go along with the others. That would have got them over in there in that environment, which was most important, and that's why they were blocked. There was a um, time and a place for the third match. Yeah. And once the Bucks realized that it made no sense for them to win and it wouldn't happen that way. All of a sudden there were plenty of barriers and a six man division and all these other things. The timing yeah. was right there, right when the exact time was right. FTR were getting hot. People were going crazy for them. That was the time for it. And the bucks aren't even in the tag team division anymore. Why not have a big, big loss on the way out? 
Well, here's a question. How did Wardlow get sideways with somebody, and who is that person? Because the same thing happened. He was, they, they were going crazy for him like Goldberg was coming out. And then two weeks later, uh, and they can't blame him. And then MKF. CM Punk was gone, coincidentally people, enough. People, oh, could that, well, that is a coincidence. Think about it? it. Yeah. People were complaining about MJF. Well, he, you know, he stole Wardlow's spotlight. When Wardlow beat him flat in the middle with his foot on his chest after the fucking power bomb, but somehow MJF's behind the scenes manipulation stole that spotlight. So the way to try to eliminate the damage that that may have done in Tony Khan's eyes was to book Wardlow in a program with a fake lawyer and unnamed security, fake security members. That was the follow-up. Let's remember that, folks. And then all of a sudden, Wardlow hadn't been popular. And they, oh, and wait, wait a minute, last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. Samoa Joe kneecaps him and then beats him. And then fucking knocks him out while he's looking at him, and it cuts his hair off. And Wardlow's revenge is to be determined because Darby Allen beat Samoa Joe one two three in the middle of the ring last week on television. Right after he did it. So uh, point is, we can talk about people getting hot if they're not in the you know boys club in the treehouse. They don't get you know the 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 spoils of the game. But nevertheless, so FTR, yes, we know what happened to him. And the other side won't admit it. And now, you know, they have a choice. Do do we go back? And again, it probably wouldn't have been that difficult a decision until the ghost of Vince McMahon showed back up. And he doesn't like tag team wrestling. And they, again, when he was heading creative, they tried to put FTR in the cat in the hat outfits. And... And again, for Bruce to even have the gall to try to talk somebody into that is amazing to me with the, the level of talent that these guys obviously have. I know he works for the company, but still. They wouldn't be so, able to take their music with them. And, it, you know, so they revert back to previous names when they've spent a couple years, you know, building these up. Um, they'd have different, which, again, their music, the homage to the Midnight Express, wonderful sentiment but i'm not you know that wouldn't bother me as much as them again having to change their names and then also if they're allowed to do what they're allowed to do what they can do that's great but if they're again trying to be fit into this formulaic mid-card wwe tag team scene and then you know and <sighs> where the matches are less important than anywhere else that eliminates their strength. That's why they're perfect. They'd be perfect for Crockett promotions. They'd be perfect for mid South. They'd be perfect for any, anywhere in wrestling over the last fucking 75 years, except for the two companies they're in right now or there that are, exist right now. One, because nobody cares about the wrestling in the WWE and the other, because they specifically have assholes as EVPs that can't put these fucking guys over because it's not their style of trampoline fanaticism. So I, th I honestly think they they decide to pick their own shots and they do Mexico and they do Japan and they rest in the mountains of North Carolina for a while and, you know, at least not have mental stress. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see how this plays out. But you know what they're going to be doing? They're going to be sitting there in Asheville, North Carolina, on their big, expansive decks overlooking the beautiful scenery and the, the pine trees of Carolina and the forests and the wildlife. And they're not going to be listening to some fucking hyperactive nimrod nammering in their ear and chattering at them. Don't and talk not about yourself like that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Tony Khan and they're not going to be listening to some shyster con artist and used car salesman trying to talk them into Dr. Seuss outfits. They are going to be listening to not only the greatest soundtracks of all of the classic music that they enjoy, but also our programs while they're sitting there on the deck, sipping the 
the uh, the, the 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 adult beverages, looking at the wildlife, and listening to their Raycon wireless earbuds. That's exactly what they're going to be doing, Brian. And they're going to be enjoying life. They're not going to be yammered at, yammered and nattered at by these goofy promoters and bookers and shysters and swervers and con men. No, they're going to be listening to us talk about how everybody else is getting taken advantage of all these shysters and con men and the buckaroos and everybody else. And they're going to be able to program that anytime they want on the Raycon Everyday Earbuds that have the optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. We've talked about the It's an amazing gel substance. As a matter of fact, I understand that they're now making heat shields for the NASA space shuttles out of the same gel that they make these optimized gel tips on the Raycon wireless earbuds. And that's why just don't get too close to a heating source because then the gel tips will form uh, a protective barrier in your ear and it'll be impossible to get them out. But on the positive side of things, you will be able to orbit the moon with no trouble. And also, the Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Well, that that's almost a full orbit around the moon, isn't it, Brian? 32 hours? So you could do one loop around the moon from the front side to the dark side and back on the same batteries. And eight hours of playtime, well, for heaven's sake, I haven't had eight hours of playtime for 20 years. <laughs> That'd practically kill a man of my age. The Raycons are also priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands that we will not name because they would sue us. But it's no wonder that Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Now, you want to talk about functions and you want to talk about features? They've got three customizable sound profiles. I can't remember what they are and they're not written here but there are three of them and they're customizable. You've got the earbud tap functions. That means you can take one of these earbuds and stick it in the side of a maple tree and it'll immediately start pouring syrup. And it's also, there's a noise isolation function. That means that if you press that button, all the noise in the world ceases. The planes and the trains and the automobiles and the dogs and the cats that are that are barking and howling and your your bitchy wife or your nagging spouse or your horrible mother-in-law or your asshole husband for that matter. You punch the, the noise isolation instantly, you're in a vacuum. You can hear nothing. And there's also an awareness mode for when you want to come back to reality. So right now, folks, go to Buy Raycon. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N, buyraycon.com slash J-C-E. Right now, today, this minute, except listen to the rest of the program first, and you'll get 15% off your Raycon order. They, even if you get five or six pairs of these little doodads, they'll give you 15% off everything. That's the way these people are, and you got to respect that buyraycon.com slash jce 15 percent off whatever the heck you want to buy and boy i would get 10 pair and just go around and start sticking them in strangers ears have them pre-programmed to listen to this program get us some new listeners we'll even pay a bounty if you're man enough whoever's listening to me out there to take a pair of raycon wireless earbuds that you have bought with our code slash jce Go find some some nut walking down the street and force these in his ears and make him listen to our show, and he begins listening to it on a regular basis. I'll give you $25. Feel free to mention the show. Don't force earbuds into anyone's ears, let alone at whatever volume you have chosen. Well, just remember also there's some rules and conditions that do apply. The guy has to listen to our shows every week for a year, and he has to write it down when he does, and he has to sign it at the end of that, and then you get your $25. What is this, Nielsen? Yeah, buyraycon.com slash J-C-E.